Hello friends, welcome to Village Idiots Christ, where we're nuts for Jesus and just play nuts. Amen. We're in Proverbs 4 today. We're already in Proverbs 4. That's awesome. We're making our way through Proverbs. Amen. We'll go ahead and jump right in here. Uh, we're going to try and get through, hopefully in 20, 25 minutes at the most, but we'll try and keep it reasonable and all that good stuff. So let's just jump right on in. Listen, my son, to your to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. Man. I love the way it's personalized. Every listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. It's always personalizing here. He wants people to pay attention. Amen. Get get them through that family thing. You know. Amen. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. When I was a boy in my father's house, still tender and only, and an only child of my mother, he taught me and said, "Lay hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands, and you will live." This is cool. This is a father. I get this now. This is a father speaking to a son. Listen, my son, so fathers and sons. Now remember, God is our father. So this is God speaking to us as his sons. Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give this is this is the father God speaking to us. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. When I was a boy in my father's house, still tender and only child of my mother, he taught me and said, This is God speaking. Lay hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or swerve from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Again, I love the way he calls wisdom she. That's awesome. Again, personalizing it. And she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. One of the great verses in the Bible. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Wisdom is the supreme thing. Get wisdom. Amen. Wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Whatever you have to, whatever price you have to pay in life to get wisdom and understanding. There's three, there's three running buddies, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We all need wisdom. And there's a balance to them. And I've heard great teaching on this, but you want to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You want to have these three things. Again, wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Man, it doesn't matter what price you have to pay. Like I've talked about before, the pearl of great price. You know, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like unto a, a pearl that was buried in a field. And a guy discovered the pearl in the field. He didn't just buy the pearl. He bought the whole field that, that, was, that, that was surrounded the pearl. Man, we want to have all of wisdom. All of wisdom that we are capable of having. Man, it is worth everything to have wisdom. Amen. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Esteem her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honor you. Again, it makes it turns wisdom into a person. A friend of mine asked me, Dwight, he says, is wisdom a person? Is it a female? And I said, no, but God wants to personalize this. And we don't know. I mean, you know, there's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are bodily in heaven. I mean, God's a spirit. He presents himself a picture of himself in a body like he did with Ezekiel and stuff like this. But, but perhaps there is a woman called wisdom in heaven. We don't know. And I'm just speculating here. I'm not trying to be spooky and kooky and goofy. But, you know, uh, this little kid who died and went to heaven saw the Holy Spirit sitting on a throne in heaven. I never conceptualized the Holy Spirit as a, in a personal form. I always thought the Holy Spirit was just inside all of us. I never thought of him in a personal form like that. But maybe wisdom is embodied in a human looking form in heaven. I don't know. But but it's it's cool the way he he puts her he puts wisdom as a her and in her, and and, uh, and as a female. I like that. That's so cool that he does that. Esteem, and it makes it personal. You esteem her, you you esteem wisdom and she will exalt you. Isn't that neat? You take hold of her and she will exalt you. Uh she will embrace, she will set a garland of grace on your head and present and present you with a, a crown of splendor. Amen. That garland of grace thing, that was in a, a different verse before we did this. There was a garland of grace in one of the other verses. That's cool. It's bringing that whole garland of grace. Grace grace has a garland, just something that sits on your head. So like the grace is resting upon you. That's just neat. Verse 10. Listen, my son, accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. Man, I'm telling you, you want to live long. Man, you want to accept what wisdom says to you. She will she will give you a long life. Amen. I guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. Aren't you glad God only leads us in straight paths? 
He's not trying to make any of us stumble. If we're stumbling, it's on our own. Amen. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. These are awesome promises. Think about what he's saying. If you're walking in wisdom, your steps won't be hampered. And you, when you run, you won't stumble. You hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Man, verse 13. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. I mean, it's like taking, like putting a death grip on instruction. You know what a death grip is? It's a grip that can't be, it's like a, um, a pit bull biting someone. He has like a death grip. He locks his jaws like a vice grip. He locks his jaws. It's like a death bite, you know. And no matter if you hit him in the head and stuff, you know, unless you knock him out or something, that death bite or death grip is not going away. That's what it's saying here. It says, hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Give instruction a death grip like you're a vice lock. Hold, uh, you know, um, um, yeah, vice lock. And hold on to it. Guard it well, for it is your life. Do not, set, do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evil men. Man, you want to stay off their path. No compromise. God doesn't want us to compromise with wicked or evil men. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it. Turn from it and go on your way. Amen. You want to avoid evil at all costs. We're going to fall in every day. We're going to drop the ball. We're going to fall into sin. We're going to struggle with stuff. All of us have stuff that gets us. But we want to, if at all possible, avoid evil. Avoid uh, avoid evil and wickedness. Um, avoid it and do not travel. Turn away. Turn from it and go on your way. For, and listen, listen, the curse, listen to the curse of being wicked. Watch what it says here. Verse 16, for they cannot sleep till they do evil. They are robbed of slumber till they make someone fall. Have you ever thought about these words here? What kind of wickedness is this? Think about this. <laughs> I don't really want to be as blunt as I, I'd like to be really blunt here, but I'm not going to be as blunt as I'd like to be, you know. <laughs> it's like a murderer can't sleep till he commits murder. A serial killer can't can't sleep till he serial kills again. It's like, it's psychotic. It's it's crazy. It's like the door of the devil torments him. Go kill, go kill, go kill. Go do evil, go do evil. I'm not letting you sleep till you go do evil. Glorify me, the devil speaking. Glorify me in evil. <laughs> but they cannot sleep till they do evil. They are robbed of some till they make someone fall. How tragic to live a life. This is the epitaph of your life. Always cost on your tombstone, that smells like sulfur because you're burning in hell. It's, it says, always cause someone to fall. Or couldn't sleep until they caused someone to fall. They put that on your tombstone because you're so wicked. Whew. They eat the... Watch this. Verse 17. Listen to this. We're only eight minutes in. We're doing good here. We're going to finish this today. They eat the bread of wickedness. Their bread is called wickedness. Their food is wickedness. That's what they nourish themselves on is wickedness. It what makes them stronger is wickedness. Like the demons you you hear, uh, I've heard it preached that the demons and stuff they thrive on pain. They thrive on hurting. You know, they thrive on people's pain in hell. It makes them stronger. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. They eat the bread of wickedness. So the bread, their 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 food is wickedness, and their drink is violence. And their alcoholic drink, their wine is violence. Man, there's no peace in these people. Man, you know these people. Have you ever met people? They just have they. No matter how what situation you catch them in, they always seem to be angry. They always seem to be discontent. Everything's always wrong. No matter. I mean, no matter what. You know, they get. They get uh, they get a ten percent raise at work. You know what they say? Oh, I'm gonna pay more taxes. Rah, 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 rah. It's like <laughs> you just got a ten percent raise, dude. You know, don't worry about the taxes. You're still gonna make more than what you're paying in taxes. <laughs> There's people like that all the time. Like they just got blessed. You know, they want a brand new car. I wish it was green instead of yellow. I hate green cars. It's a free car, dude. Oh no, no. No, they're eating the bread of wickedness and drinking the wine of violence. Sad, man. Sad, sad people. And and just, just tragic stuff. Let's go to verse 18. The path of the righteous is like the first and the last. Here's a comparison. Watch this. Okay. I'm going to do, okay. First 16, 17, I'm going to do together. And then I'm going to start. 
Uh, well, no, I don't need to. 18 and 19 contrast. Watch this. Here's 18. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter to the full light of day. But the wicked of the wicked, the way, the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Man, um, righteousness portrayed in light. Wickedness and darkness, such a perfect picture because God is light and the devil is darkness. The Bible talks about deep darkness, uh, uh, about outer darkness and hell. It's just perfectly dark. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of, don't you like that first, you're, you live by the ocean and you see all of a sudden you see the red and the comes up. At, uh, if you're, the ocean's facing east like the Atlantic, you watch it and just all of a sudden it's just starting to light. It comes like, It's like at the end of the ocean, you know, it's this beautiful light that comes up. The path of the righteous, that's what we're like. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn. Isn't that awesome? Shining ever brighter till the full light of day. Man, our righteousness is just shining ever brighter till the full light of day. Wow. Man, and God did all this for us. Isn't this cool? This is all from God. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. They don't even know what makes them stumble. It's so dark. They're tripping over everything. And they don't even know what's making them stumble. Wow. Man, light, righteous people are in full light. Wicked people are in total darkness. It's such a contrast. God didn't want us to miss this. Here again, here's God speaking as a father again. Watch this, verse 20. My son, pay, it's like he shifts gears whole, totally here. Watch this. 20 through 27, we're going to finish up here. 11 minutes in, we're doing good today. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Again, he's reiterating what... He's reiterating, like, like the first verse one says, listen, my son, to a father's church, pay attention, again, again, they're saying, verse 20, my son, pay attention to what I say, listen close to my words. They're running together. He's, he started like this and he's ending like this. My son, pay attention to what I say, listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. You know, righteousness gives you health in your body. Isn't that cool? Above all, above all else, Above all else, guard your heart for it's the wellspring of one of the most important verses in the Old or New Testament. If you take hold of this verse, you'll save your life. You'll save your eternity. This is dealing with your heart. Above all else, above all else, it's the supreme. It sits at the top of the highest mountain in the world. It's the most supreme, most important thing. It's above all things. God says this is above all things. You're not supposed to miss it. I wish they would type this in all caps, above all else. Guard your heart. It's the most important. Your heart is your life. Jesus said to the Pharisees, he says, you think by your careful study of the scriptures you have life? He said, he said, the kingdom of God's within you. He was talking about their heart and their hearts were all screwed up. They knew the scriptures, but they were wicked men in their hearts. You can know the whole Bible, memorize it front to back, back to front, sideways, upside down, or reverse. But if your heart's wicked, it don't matter how much Bible you got in you. Man, it will avail you nothing. Above all else, guard your heart. Man, don't let a bitter root. The Bible talks about bitter roots in our heart. That's what unforgiveness does. Unforgiveness puts bitterness in your heart. You know, a lack of mercy makes your heart hard. Man, a lack of, just keep your heart with all diligence. It's the well, it says here, above all else, guard your heart. It's the wellspring. Your, it's the wellspring. It's the fountain of life. Your heart. That's what, that's where your soul and all of it, it's all, it's all tied in together. It's a mystery. We don't understand soul and heart and mind and spirit. It's, it's, they got mind, spirit, heart, soul. It's all, it's all wrapped together somehow. We don't fully understand it all. None of us have the understanding of the full picture of it. And I know some people can teach on this and break it all apart. But it's all, it's the interior you. It's the you on the inside that you don't see in the mirror. It's the who you are on the inside. Guard all of that. that. That's all part of your heart. Guard that. Guard the, the, the precious treasure inside the clay vessel. We're, we're all earthen vessels with a precious treasure inside, the Bible says, somewhere in New Testament. And, it, and we, are, we have that treasure as Christ. Guard that with all your heart. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt tar far from your lips. I got to work on this one. I I still don't speak right all the time. None of us do. It is what it is. We're trying to get there and we'll keep a repentant heart before us. So I'm, I'm working on verse 24 myself. See the go there? 
keep perverse perversity from your lips or keep corrupt talk. You know, when you speak about politics and nonsense all the time, you can become corrupted in that stuff. That stuff can wear you down. Be careful that you don't meditate on all the dark. You want to meditate on the light. Meditate of things that are a good report, not a bad report. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. I love that. Don't be looking at the girl on your right. Don't be looking at the dude on your left. <laughs> I'm just making it real. I want to be equal opportunity, men and women. I didn't want to just make this guys and lust. You know, hey, girls are looking too. Hey, it is what it is. So let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your, that's why it says fix your eyes on Jesus. If you're fixing your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfect your faith, you're looking straight ahead, baby. Because Jesus ain't to the left or the right. He's right in front of you. <laughs> Where God the Father is. That's what Jesus is. Right directly in front, always in front of you. Always. You're always headed towards Jesus if you're in Christ. Isn't that cool? Make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are for a man. Don't get off on that sideways path. Stay out of the quicksand. Stay on the strong level path. Amen. Do not swerve to the right or left. Keep your foot from evil. Man, this is so good. I'm going to, um, 15 minutes in, I'm going to read the whole thing through real quick and we'll be done. Listen, my son, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. When I was a boy in my father's house, still tender and only child of my mother, he taught me and said, lay hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or swerve from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Esteem her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honor you. She will set a garland of grace on your head and present you a crown of splendor. Listen, my son, accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. I guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of the evil man. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way, for they cannot sleep until they do evil. They are robbed of slumber till they make someone fall. They eat the bread of wickedness. They drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, shining ever brighter to the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your great gaze directly before you. Make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. Do not swerve to the right or left. Keep your foot from evil. Whew. Are those not beautiful, amazing, glorious words from our Father in heaven? You wonder, we, you know, all you have to do is read the Bible and know that God cares. All you have to do is see the, I mean, these are words are lovely words. These are words, you know, you can see who God is. God, you can tell. God put a lot of thought into these words because it's the Holy Spirit that wrote this through men. Just like the, and I'm not comparing my poetry to the Bible. But, you know, stuff will come into my mind when I'm writing poetry and I never had that thought before and all of a sudden just beautiful stuff and I get it humbles me sometimes the stuff I write can you imagine can you imagine Isaiah or Solomon or David or whoever wrote these things and and look what they wrote and Paul in the New Testament go wow that's really I, mean, I bet you when they were writing this and they did it all longhand on scrolls uh, you would look at it on these pages printed out so neatly but they did this this was all done in longhand can you imagine on scrolls? They had no typewriters back then. Think about, look how thick, look how thick the Bible is. You know, 66 books, over a thousand chapters, all of it by longhand. <laughs> Just meditate on that for a second. You think God, you wonder if God, you know, God could have, could have given, God could have given somebody way back, way back a thousand years ago, I'm, I'm going to teach you how to make a typewriter, boy. <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to make paper in a typewriter. It wouldn't be like we got today, but, you know, it might have been a rudimentary typewriter, so it wouldn't have had to do everything longhand. And then they had to make copies of it, and the copies had to be perfect. The scribes, that, that's what a scribe was. All he did was write stuff. You imagine the, his crinkled up hand at the end of his life? Wow. Man, 
God loves you. Can you tell by his words that he loves you? I sure can tell he loves me. I know he loves me and I know he loves you. These are beautiful words. We are blessed to have this book. We're all falling short. We're all struggling with something. We're all addicted to something. There's something in all of us that's going sideways. At least most of us. Some people got it all together. I ain't one of them. I'm struggling with stuff. How about you? <laughs> love you, love you. Can't get enough of you, man. We, we, we made it through a whole chapter. I love being able to get through it. I hate breaking the thought in the middle. Sometimes you got to talk about these things in, in detail because there's so much. But this is all straightforward. Good and evil. You know, wisdom is supreme. That's what it says at the top of the chapter. Wisdom is supreme. That's what I'm going to call this. Wisdom is supreme. Love you, love you, can't get enough of you. I hope you had a blessed time. Tomorrow's Revelation Wednesday. We're going to talk about the whore Babylon, chapter 17. Revelation Wednesday, the religious whore. Next week, it'll be the economic whore. <laughs> it's getting good, kids. Love you, love you.